I don't know if you saw the show last week. We, were at, um, we did Nestle last week. And um, well, when, when we were filming the Nestle show, we were up in Harrogate at the Lib Dems conference. And they have all these stalls there of these exhibitors. And we're charging around there. And we had all the cameras out, fucking running around, upsetting Nestle and all that kind of stuff. And we co I couldn't fucking resist it. I could Because there was a British nuclear fuel stall. <laughs> I couldn't resist I just ran up and said, see you soon. <laughs> We did, a, a few years back, we did a programme about seagull crap being contaminated at Sellafield. This resulted in Greenpeace getting samples analysed and it resulted in sort of the, the stuff being classified as nuclear waste. They've now had to spend nearly a million quid, right, fixing it so the gulls and the pigeons don't become contaminated. So I'm thinking, result. <laughs> and they've got this monitoring board. And then we did this programme about um, nuclear trains. Now, in the program about nuclear trains, um, we actually asked whether Sir John Guinness, who's the chairman of the company, would actually make any money out of the privatisation. And they wrote back and said, no, 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 he's retiring, he's not going to make any money. Then we also said, you know, look, we found some contamination by the track. Now, is it because the site's contaminated or the trains are contaminated? And they wrote back and said, no, 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 the trains don't leak and the contamination's all within the safety limits. Now, we started to write to them on some other matters. And they wrote us a little note back saying, look, we have an excellent safety record. We have a 40% reduction in one year of conventional accidents. We have a seven-fold decrease in uh, time loss accidents. And we have won numerous safety awards for our work here. He said, great. He said, we also have a policy of being open about our accidents with our workers so that we can all learn. And we can share the information and learn from it. And so it is with that spirit of sharing and learning that I pass on some of the incidents that have occurred. Now, this year, they have had a nitric acid spill that resulted in two workers being hospitalised. They've got an allegedly forged certificate on the physics health monitoring. They have got incomplete forms on the nuclear flasks. And because a sealed source went missing, they got an improvement notice served upon them. This is fairly heavy-duty stuff, but it gets weirder because we managed to get hold of some of their on-site briefing on health and safety. It is a timely to remind ourselves of the potentially serious consequences regarding the misuse of electricity. <laughs> OK. The misuse of electricity. A cable with a plug at one end and bare wires at the other <laughs> was found plugged in within a cell in the Thorpe uranium finishing. This is a repeat occurrence only a few months previous. <laughs> is anyone here beginning to think, the Simpsons. <laughs> then this one here, they got a, a third year apprentice was part of a bizarre initiation ritual where she was taped to a chair and then wheeled out under a shower thing and they forgot to realise that the shower was scalding hot water and she got severely blistered. The bizarre thing about this is if you can just verify this, the site is at Springfield's. That's Homer's plum. <laughs> A recent event at WEP resulted in an individual falling off a chair and momentarily losing consciousness. The investigation is indicating that the chair condition may have been a contributory factor. <laughs> in two recent incidents, personnel have suffered cuts while using their lockers. Where a locker has a small top section, there is a temptation to reach in without looking and catch your hand on part of the locker. It is safer to look into the locker while you're reaching in to get things out. just slapstick heaven over there, isn't it? This is, uh, the whole of BNFL is actually in black and white with a piano player. <laughs> and people walking around with planks going, what? what is going on? <laughs> now, BNFL, right, this is, this is the thing that we're doing today, is because BNFL are in consortium with Lockheed Martin, who are the weapons manufacturer, who had a stall at the Labour Party conference for the first time this year, not that they wish to influence any business decisions that the Labour Party are going to make, and the fact that they're in consortium with BNFL now to try and bid for the contractor status for Aldermaston Atomic Weapons Establishment. 
Now, all the Martin's Atomic Weapons Establishment is government-owned, contractor-operated. So the government owns the site, MOD own it, and Hunting Bray are the contractors at the moment. And we wanted to have a little natter with them. Because uh, in 1993, just two months into Hunting Bray's contract, uh, a worker there misread a label and tipped a liquid tritium, which is low-grade nuclear waste, into a place that he shouldn't have. And what happened then was that tritium started to register in the Aldermaston stream. Now, the Aldermaston stream is nearby, and that feeds into the River Kennet, which supplies Reading with some of its drinking water. And tritium levels started going up in the Aldermaston stream, still below safety standards, but they started rising. Now, they've got all this stuff swishing around underneath Aldermaston. 1997, May, they start doing managed discharges into the Aldermaston stream without approval from the Environment Agency. Now, they are allowed to discharge nuclear waste, but they have to do it thing, through a thing called the Pangborn Pipeline. And what they do is they fill up these tanks, about once a week, they flush them, this stuff goes under the ground, through the pipeline, comes out of Pangborn, into the River Thames. Uranium, plutonium, tritium, just flushing away, which I think is quite nice, come Elva season. <laughs> this is going to get all these Cockney ding-dongs and their fucking mutated e jelly deals. <laughs> now, Cockney ding-dong, marvellous, lovely, lovely, all right, diamond geezer. Hello, who the fuck are you looking at? <laughs> January this year, the Environment Agency found out that Aldermaston Atomic Weapons Establishment had been dumping into the stream without their approval. And they were a tad miffed. In fact, they're so miffed, they're thinking of taking them to court. Right, and they're holding this consultation process. And we thought, consultation process on the nuclear industry? We must attend. <laughs> you said you got the authorization in 99 and the discharges were going on in May 97. So you're doing it without authorisation. There were discharges in 97, yes, that's perfectly correct. Without authorisation. The discharges were at a level that we felt we had an agreement with the agency. And I just, it was great, because I could just walk over to the other side of the room to this bloke from the Environment Agency <laughs> and just say, he said... <laughs> now, I've just had a quick chat. Uh, Mr. Bradley, and he said that the Environment Agency knew that there were discharges. He was under the impression you knew that they were going on into the Aldermaston stream. Well, quite clearly we didn't know. I served an enforcement notice on the company uh, in February this year after I was informed of the, the discharges in general. So you did discuss them with the Environment Agency? We did. So 1997, you discussed them with the regulator? We did. You discussed the discharges of tritium into the Aldermaston stream with the Environment Agency in 1997. Yes. And was that because um, the Environment Agency seemed to be saying that they only became aware of it in 99? It depends on what aspect you're talking about, and I'm not going to pursue this argument any further because it needs to be... Uh, well, I'm just trying to clarify it. I know you're trying to clarify it. This is, this is a subject that will come up to the courts, presumably. So, if I'm correct in my analysis of what you've said, there were discharges going into the Aldermaston stream told you already, I'm from 97, but the, you believe the discharges to be low enough not to require that authorisation? That is correct. So you hadn't been in contact with the Environment Agency about those? I've already answered that question. So you, so you hadn't been in... I'm just clarifying that. You hadn't I've been in... I've already answered that question. But you hadn't been in contact with the Environment Agency I've in 1997. And so I went back to Mr Bradley and said, look, um, if, can we talk to you about contaminated workers? Well, over the past five years, I think there have been five incidents involving 14 workers. Would that be correct? I haven't added them up, frankly, but... Um, do, do you think you ought to? I, I think that each incident is treated in its own right. And if there were any connection between those incidents, obviously we'd be interested in that. I don't think it's anywhere near that level. You don't think it's anywhere near that level of incidents that have occurred on site? No. Now, Aldermaston Atomic Weapons Establishment, this is the place where they make the nukes for the bombs and they decommission stuff. It's weird because it doesn't appear on ordnance survey maps. Because you get there and there's these big signs that just say no cameras, no photographs, no filming, no sketching. There's <laughs> a Russian spy. <laughs> and so we get there and what happens, we've found out that the local MP is a guy called Martin Salter. 
has, has, we read in the paper that he was going to visit Aldermarson's site that day. And we managed to get hold of his mobile phone number. <laughs> Is that Martin Salter? Yeah, it is. Who's that? It's Mark Thomas here from Channel 4. Uh, I understand you're in Aldermaston today. Yes, I am. Um, is it possible that we can have a chat with you at all after your visit? I can't do anything while I'm inside AWE Aldermaston, but I mean, I'm quite happy to talk to you when I've completed my tour. We've spoke to, to Robin Bradley, who's Chief Executive of Aldermaston, and he agreed that he'd interview with us. Um, Mr. Bradley's, Mr. Bradley's here now, if you want to have a word with him. Is he? But, uh, oh, excellent. Can we put him on? And he passed the phone over. <laughs> he passed the phone over, man. <laughs> and you just said, this, I'm, I'm not... You deal with it. You deal with it. <laughs> and, and one of his... Uh, the co I think head of corporate affairs, a guy called Graham Hammond, came in on the phone going, we'll, we'll sort out the interview later, we'll sort it out. <laughs> Caught him twice pointing that fucking gun at us. Yeah, I did that. Yeah. <laughs> and so we, we were up there, and, and the police came along. They sent along the traffic cops, and, the, and what we've done is we've we've tied the gate up and padlocked it onto the ground so they can't get in. And so the traffic police come up and say, uh, we're, we're a bit concerned." The um, <clears throat> cherry picker. <laughs> a bit concerned that it might distract drivers. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they just went, well, on private property. We'll take it down a bit. Go and send it back up. We'll take it down. Won't be long. Right then. When the MP came out, we phoned him up and said, we're just round at this place. He came round and we said, can you get in the cherry picker? We're going to have an interview at the top. He goes, you're all right. We saw you coming out of the little, the little hut just down here. Yeah, just there. Which was the, uh, I presume, the suiting up room. Wait. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah. I got, I got into the spaceman's outfit and I went and had a look at their storage place. I mean, it really is quite unbelievable. I mean, it looks like a sort of 1950s shed, but uh, that's where they're storing intermediate nuclear waste and they're in the process of decommissioning that and installing it somewhere else on the site. There's absolutely no doubt about it that the technology's moved on and a lot of the stuff that's happening at the moment on the site includes state-of-the-art safety procedures. I think a big problem on this site, and a big problem for the people that I represent, and for anyone else living around this area, is the actions of the Ministry of Defence in the 50s and the 60s. There was a regime there, and I had it confirmed to me today, that if they had a problem on the site, they had some radioactive material they didn't know what to do with, dig a hole and bury it. Virtually no concern for, for public safety. And the problem that the current management regime has got is they don't know where some of this stuff is coming from. Anything could be here and it can pollute the groundwater and of course the groundwater works its way through and ends up in places like the in North Ponds and the, uh, and, and the Aldermaster Stream and so on and so forth. Some of the material is clearly lying here in, in a state, in a mobile form. And that's got to be a concern to anybody. With, with a it. huge culture of secrecy. Yeah, I mean, far worse, far worse in the 50s and 60s, but I mean, massive, massive cult cultural secrecy, and God knows what is down there. We actually uh, phoned up Aldermaston and said, Can we, about the interview, they said, yes, send us the documents and we'll do it tomorrow at 2.30. I'm like, what? Hang on, what's happening here? Your atomic weapons establishment? We've just put a cherry picker up there. We've run at your chief executive, said, can we have an interview? And you've said yes. <laughs> it's like we didn't realise it was that fucking easy. <laughs> we should be doing this. We shouldn't have fucked about with Nestle. We should just cover them in spray foam and say, can we talk now? I'm like, yes. <laughs> I reckon if we send Tony Blair a turd in a box, we're in with a chance. <laughs> and um, 
I started, we, we, they didn't let us talk to Mr. Bradley. They would let us talk to this guy who was their assurance director. And immediately, as soon as I heard the word assurance director, you just go, aye, aye. Because that, why have they got, why do we need assuring? Why? What's going on? <laughs> so we started having a chat and he said, well, we're trying to be more open. But obviously it is quite painful, that process, uh, because you have to get over some embarrassments. Um, you know, we call it the pain barrier. You have to get through the pain barrier. I said, and I am part of that barrier. <laughs> I said, yes. I mean, we analyse all these water flows, uh, and the Environment Agency insists that we do, and mm -hmm. you saw them at the meeting the other night. They're pretty tough guys. They keep us on our toes. And we don't find radioactivity, other than the tritium, which uh, you know about, mm. um, in normal conditions. The time when we did get a, a movement of plutonium was in that flash flood in the 80s when we had what people call the one in a hundred year storm. So there was a flash flood in the 80s? Yeah. And the plutonium went on the move? Very small amounts of it. Has there been any contamination of uranium? No, it's plutonium we're talking about. So it's only plutonium here, yeah. so there's no uranium? Um, there is uranium around there, and right. we do handle uranium. Um, and there is a, a bit of a uranium contamination that we've found since we published that map just in that area there. Has that moved at all? There is evidence at very, very low levels that it's moved just off-site. I wouldn't want to tell you who owns the ground. I think uh, you'd, you'd have to talk to the landowners to Right, so it's on someone else. It's not just halfway under the road. It's actually on someone else's yeah. land. Right. We went on to the figures. Right, do you remember the 14 workers contaminated in five years? Right, we started talking about that, and the guy said, well, let's have a look at the figures, and we started going through the paperwork. I said, two here. He said, yes, two here, yes. And these are all unclassified documents and stuff that's been sort of put out in little reports and that. I said, there's five here. He said, no, we were wrong. There's only three, so you've lost two. <laughs> so then this one here, we got the dates muddled up, and we printed two separate dates, and in fact, it's only one incident, so you're down another one. So I said, right, we're down to 11 workers being contaminated in five years. He said, well, no, there's been another two accidents. <laughs> I said, what's the figure? He said, 14. <laughs> it mentions here that the plutonium mm -hmm. is wrapped in a foil. Mm -hmm. and actually, on this page here, I think it goes on to two levels of two... two um, layers mm -hmm. of, of aluminium foil. Mm -hmm. I think it says domestic foil. Yeah. Um, so that would be like, yeah. like a bako foil, yeah. like a, a, a kitchen foil. Mm -hmm. um, then it's put into a plastic bag, PVC yeah. plastic bag, heat sealed, yeah. put into another plastic bag, yeah. taped up with adhesive tape, yeah. put into a tin, yeah. plastic lid or? Be a metal tin. Be, be a metal tin with a metal, it's, it's, metal lid. And then it's, got, it's like a baked bean can. It's yeah, so, then you, so, so you've now got it in a, in a tin. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. And does, does that, is that how you still store it? In, in these facilities, material is still stored in that fashion. Right. The, is it a special foil? Um, well, I mean, it's special in that it's high quality, etc. but it is right. metal foil. I mean, it's, so so it's, yeah. it's like bacon foil? Yeah. yeah. My mum would wrap my sandwiches more efficiently than that. <laughs> Especially if it was Piccadilly, which could contaminate the wagon wheel and the apple in the box. A glove box yeah. is a thing about so wide, so tall, yeah. so deep. Right. And it's a metal box with perspex fronts, and you've got holes in it with gloves in. Yeah. So the whole thing is sealed and it's extracted. You can put your hands in the gloves right. and you can work on material the other side of a perspex screen and you're protected by the gloves. Right. So plutonium contamination will not come out. The air that is extracted goes through a series of goes filters. Goes through the filter changes. Right. Which now, is now, now in that particular case, we're talking about a facility that was now closed down and awaiting decommissioning. And an operator... So the glove box was non-operational here? That's right. Still connected up to everything and we were thinking so, of decommissioning it. And right. it came along to disconnect to change that filter. And when he tried to undo the filter, yeah. it wouldn't come. And he undid a nut on the other side of the filter. So instead of undoing, if you like, on the clean side of the filter, he actually exposed the contaminated side of the filter. So we then ended up with contamination right. into the area, okay? And the exclusion zone for the work yeah. was, of course, designed on the basis that he was only going to open the clean side. 
So people who were in the same plant area but further away well, were, certain, contaminated we were suddenly are, exposed to some radiation. Side. And he says, well, one of the accidents, we were transferring mercury from, a, from one container into another container to make it safer. And some of the plutonium in the mercury, plutonium, most dangerous substance known to fucking human beings, right, some of the plutonium became airborne. And at the end of the day, it was discovered that some people had some contamination. Somebody had some on his, on his hair. So he'd actually got plutonium on his hair? Yeah. Wash and go? No, it's wash and stay for fucking 50 million years, geezer. <laughs> The incident here where the man has cut his finger with a piece of glass, what they were doing again was preparing a glove box for decommissioning and it turned out that there was a splinter of glass on the floor of the glove box. Now bearing in mind the men are wearing rubber and plastic mm. gloves, okay, and he was picking up dirt using tape and he actually ended up... Sorry, with... using tape? Yeah, well... So, oh, I see. So is it like double-sided yeah. tape? It's just, he was just picking up some bits of dirt from the bottom of the box, not plutonium, just so dirt. No, but is it tape? The, yeah. um, so he would have got yeah, tape like on his... sticky tape. So it's like double back, sticky back plastic, the, yeah. the, the double-sided. Yeah. So and his... And that piece of glass was stuck to the tape. So like you'd get we, with we pollen assume it was on your suit. If you've got pollen on your suit, you just wrap it and dab yeah. it. So yeah. he's got his hands in the glove box. Yeah. He's picking up the dirt yeah. and the materials with the, the tape. Yeah. And a piece of glass. There was a piece of glass on the tape and it nicked the end of his finger. You've got another punctured glove here, haven't you? That was actually a glove that itself was just uh, broken and he ended up with just surface contamination. So he got some plutonium on his fingers. And that was cleaned off. Right. How do you clean it off? Well, you, you simply wash it right. and you scrub it. I mean, plutonium is um, it's not an easily dissolved material. It's like a dust, so you, you wash it off again. Yeah, and, and, and presumably a tray so that it collects Oh yeah, it, all the water's collected and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, okay. And, uh, yeah, and they just wash and scrub till it's clean. And that, does that practice still happen with the tape? No, not without, you know, we learned from that incident as well. And so do you, people, use, like, do you use a proper, like, a dustpan and brush? Yeah, and people do a inside. thorough inspection yeah. uh, to see whether there's any possibility that there's going to be any sharp, not right. just glass, but sharp metal or anything but, in the bottom of that. So the, so the practice of picking up dirt with the tape is no longer here, no longer... Uh, well, it, it will be if you've gone through the system of saying, what is in that box, what are we picking up? Yeah, you can pick stuff up with tape. Okay. So, and if there are sharp objects, dustpan and brush. Yep, you'll move them in a, in a more controlled way. Uh, it's just a nuclear material. Oh, dab it with a thing, pick it up with a dust. Get the hoover! <laughs> and th th I think we got the ballooning incident next. Yeah, that was a, a change of pressure in a glove box. Right. Um, as I said, the glove is You've always the supposed to be sucked in. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Um, so the glove arms will actually just stick out. Uh, well, they'll stick in. So, yeah, they'll stick, stick, stick out, out into, into the stick box, out. sticking into the box. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and on that particular instant, there was a pressure change, and the boxes, the, the gloves actually uh, were pointing the other way. So the gloves were. That's what it means by ballooning. Yeah. So the gloves were pointing out of the box. Yep. Just into the plant. Yeah. I mean, there was nobody working on it. There was right. nobody contaminated. There was no spread yeah. of contamination. But the the pressure the system had changed. Uh, the and your gloves had shot out through the hole, gone out. Yep. Yeah. And pointing out on the other yeah. side. Right. Order Master and AWE, Hunting Bray do say, look, we, you know, we're trying to be more open. We're, our safety standard is getting better. The accident rate is going down. And, and to, to be honest, that's the most open I've ever seen anyone from a nuclear industry. Not open enough, but open. And I did say to him at the end, I said, I'm amazed at the openness here. Five years ago, you couldn't have put a cherry picker outside the atomic weapons establishment, and you're now talking to us, and it's incredibly open. I said, in two, three years' time, who knows what could happen? You might even have a visitor's centre. <laughs> and he said, well, it's, it's actually been a pipe dream of ours for some time. <laughs> but um, what we've done, we talked to this bloke who's got some land opposite Aldermaston, and we said, can we borrow a bit? He said, yeah. I said, we just want to put a little sign up. He said, yeah, that's not a problem. <laughs> Check out the issues and get inspired to some action at the Mark Thomas website.